What's up everybody, how's it going? Today, I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know about TypeScript. During my two years as a software engineer at Google, I worked almost exclusively in TypeScript. During my three months as a software engineer at Facebook, I worked almost exclusively in TypeScript. And while I first wrote the Algo Expert front-end code base in JavaScript, during the past six months, we've actually been completely migrating it over to TypeScript, doing all new feature development in TypeScript. All that to say, I've got quite a bit of experience with with TypeScript, and that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Now, I'm gonna get into the details of TypeScript in a minute or so, but I wanna start by giving you a very brief summary of how I feel about TypeScript. And here, if I'm being honest, I'm not a fan of TypeScript. I'm just not. And I'll tell you three reasons why I'm not a fan of it. The first one is that TypeScript solves an inexistent problem. Types in JavaScript. Who needs them, right? It's not like we have runtime errors left and right in JavaScript. The second reason I'm not a fan of TypeScript is that, you know how when you're coding, you often run into bugs, and when you run into bugs, you have to debug them. It can be tedious and time-consuming. TypeScript basically eliminates 90% of bugs. It kind of takes away the challenge and the fun from coding. And the third reason that I'm not a fan is that if you wanted to write Java, why not just write Java instead of masking it behind JavaScript? See what I mean? Now, of course, from these three reasons arises one question, which is, did you fall for my April Fool's joke? That's right, today's April Fools, that was a joke. I'm the biggest fan of TypeScript. I think TypeScript is the best thing that's happened to front-end development and JavaScript in the past decade, and I got you. Admit it, I got you. I got you a little bit. Some of you were on the verge of smashing the dislike button if you haven't already. By the way, if you have, unsmash it, and if you haven't, don't. Go a tiny bit to the left and smash the like button, and while you're at it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I recently checked my stats, and it looks like 80% of you, 80%, 80% are not subscribed to the channel. That means that the YouTube algorithm is feeding you my videos, it's shoving them in your faces, you love them, but you're not subscribing. That changes today. Okay, back to TypeScript. Okay, so what is TypeScript? Well, TypeScript is a programming language that is developed and maintained by Microsoft, big name, and it is a strict superset of JavaScript. What that means is that it's JavaScript plus other stuff. And what that means is that JavaScript code is effectively TypeScript code. And what that means is that if you have a TypeScript application, it can have both JavaScript files and TypeScript files. And those files can mix and mingle together, and that can be really nice when you're migrating a very large JavaScript code base to TypeScript, and you're doing so incrementally. But so what does TypeScript actually do? Well, it basically adds a robust type system to JavaScript. If you come from a typed language background, like C++ or Java, or basically anything that isn't JavaScript or Python, then you're likely familiar with types. Well, it turns out that in a language like JavaScript, there are no types by default. That means that it's very easy to make errors in JavaScript, literally errors in syntax or in your code logic, passing the wrong parameters to functions, and these errors will only be caught at runtime, when your code is actually being executed by users in production. And that can be really bad. What's particularly bad about JavaScript is that it's very, very flexible, much more so than Python, for example, to the point where in JavaScript you can basically access any property, whether it exists or not, off of almost any entity in JavaScript, or at least any object in JavaScript, including things like strings or arrays, and that makes it even more easy to have these really bad errors in your JavaScript code, and like I said, these errors can lead to really bad bugs in production. So TypeScript eliminates that by introducing a robust type system to JavaScript. And the last thing that I'll say about TypeScript before I jump into some examples is that TypeScript is actually, as of 2017, I think, when I first started at Google, right around that time, 
time. It is an officially supported language at Google. I forget what the exact name is, but basically at Google there are a few officially supported languages, C++, Java, Python, Golang, JavaScript, and now TypeScript. That means that at Google, if you're writing code in any of these languages, including TypeScript now, your code has to go through code reviews, including through a readability review from someone who has readability in the given language. And so now, for TypeScript code, you need someone who has TypeScript readability to approve your TypeScript code at Google. And guess who has TypeScript readability? This guy. So I feel like the best way for you to truly appreciate the beauty that is TypeScript is for me to show you a simple example. So here, I've got a very simple example of some JavaScript code that's got a bug, and then we're gonna look at the TypeScript code that catches the bug. So look at the non-commented out code first, this function called get lowercase string. As you can see, it just calls the native JavaScript to lowercase function on the passed string. And here we call the function, but we don't pass it a string. In JavaScript, that's okay, because JavaScript doesn't give a fuck. So this will cause a very nasty runtime error. If I actually try to run this here in my terminal, node example, as you can see, we get a runtime error, cannot read property to lowercase of undefined. The almighty cannot read property foo of undefined error in JavaScript. This stupid little bug could very easily bring down an entire page in your website. Now let's look at the TypeScript example of this function. It's the exact same thing, get lowercase string, except you've got a string type here, you see the colon string, and here our function call has a little squiggly line in VS Code and it tells us expected one argument but got zero. If I pass in, let's say, undefined, it's gonna say, oh, argument of type undefined is not assignable to parameter of type string. And you can see also in the terminal, if you've got the TypeScript type checker running, it'll show you in your terminal. And so just like that, TypeScript saved you a really bad bug that could have cost you hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay, maybe not hundreds of millions. If you ever lost hundreds of millions of dollars because you couldn't access the property foo of undefined, I think I would like literally pull my hair out. Okay, let's look at a more realistic example. So I'm gonna comment out this get lowercase string code and uncomment this out here. Imagine that we have this function called get human readable message. It takes in a response response, some arbitrary API response, and based on the data in that response, like if the response or the API call has succeeded, it's going to return a message, and it's going to grab the message from the response and display it in a human-readable way, or it's just going to return that something went wrong, right? This is a very realistic function that you might have in your JavaScript code. And as you can see here, I'm calling this function with some arbitrary API response here. I'm gonna console.log the result of this. Can you catch the bug? There's a bug here. Pause the video, see if you can catch it. All right, did you catch it? The bug is that here, my response, API response, has the message embedded in this data object. Whereas up here in the method, I just call response.message rather than response.data.message. Now, the tricky part is that if I execute this code, let's save here and execute the code, you will see that this does not cause a runtime error. Because in JavaScript, you can access a property that doesn't exist on an object. We're not doing response.message and calling it as if it were a function. That would cause an error. Or we're not doing something like response.message.foo. That would cause an error. All that we're doing is response.message, so it doesn't cause a runtime error, but it's still a bad bug, and you don't want to have undefined in a human-readable message message in your production code. So how does TypeScript fix this? Well, we're going to uncomment this code or comment this one, uncomment this one. And here, as you can see, we've got a little bit more verbosity because we have types, but it's much better. We avoid the bug. So our response is of type API response. Here we've typed out this interface that says, oh, I've got a data property, and this data property is an object that has a boolean for has succeeded and a string for my message. And here, what do you know? It tells me property message does not exist on type API response. It exists on type API response dot data, 
right? Now it disappears, but not before. And similarly, imagine I change this message here in my API response that I'm actually going to use to call this method. Imagine I change the message to be, I don't know, let's say undefined. Oh, I'm going to get an error. API response that I tried to pass in has a type that's incompatible. What's the underlying cause? Well, type undefined is not assignable to type string. And hopefully here from this example, you can start to really appreciate this sheer unadulterated beauty that is TypeScript. Now I know what you're wondering at this point. You're thinking, okay, this looks great, sign me up. But does this work well with popular front-end frameworks like Angular or React? And the answer is, Yes, of course it does. At Google, I worked in Angular 1 and Angular 2, and we worked in TypeScript. It worked splendidly. At Facebook and React, on Algo Expert and React. So here I'm going to show you a little bit of Algo Expert React code, specifically Redux code, and also some React component code to show you how TypeScript meshes really, 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 did I mention really, well with React. Oh, and by the way, if you're preparing for your coding interviews or your systems design interviews, check out my company, algoexpert.io, use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. We just released a lot of new stuff, new content, new features, a brand new coding workspace all written in TypeScript, go check it out. You're not going to regret it. But so back to the Redux TypeScript code. Here, as you can see, I've got three files, actions, types, and index. This is standard Redux code. But as you can see, it's all typed out. I'm not going to explain to you what Redux is. If you're unfamiliar with it, I would encourage you to just look it up and probably follow some tutorials. But so as you can see, everything is really well typed out for these particular Redux files. And what's really nice is that means that in part parts of your code where you could really make nasty, hard to catch errors, like for instance here, TypeScript will catch them. Imagine here I did something like data equals action dot payload and I misspelled payload. Boom, TypeScript's gonna catch that. Imagine I said payload dot foo. Boom, TypeScript's gonna catch that. Imagine I said is loading equals one instead of false. Boom, TypeScript is going to catch that. Imagine I said that I'm expecting another action. Here, instead of get certificate info success, I'm going to call it get certificate. Boom, it's going to tell me that's not one of the compatible actions that you typed out. It's really powerful, works great with the Redux. And now, finally, let's look at a React component here, the certificate modal. In React components, you pass in properties, right? Well, with TypeScript, you can actually add types to those properties. So here, as you can see, we define the props up here. Very simple. We've got a Boolean and an arbitrary onClose function. And here, our modal, certificate modal, has these props as the type of the properties. And if I were to try to access some other property, like let's say test, it's going to error out. And similarly, if in the parent component of this component, I instantiate the certificate modal, but I pass it in the wrong property or the wrong type for a property, TypeScript will catch it. And that's really, really, really helpful. Oh, and the last thing that I want to point out is that TypeScript also gives you this any type, which is really nice because sometimes you do want to have the flexibility that JavaScript otherwise gives you, the flexibility of not caring about types or of moving very fast. And sometimes you want to do that even in a TypeScript application. Maybe you're migrating a big code base, you're migrating a file, you need to pump out a feature really fast, and you're really stuck on a particular type, and you want to kind of skip it altogether because you know that it doesn't have any errors. Then you can use this any type, which will basically say this can be anything. This doesn't really have a type. And this is something that we did here. This is not something that I would advise that you do all the time, but it's just something that's pretty nice. So at this point, I hope that you're convinced that TypeScript is amazing. I hope that you have been exposed to its beauty through this video. If you're interested in learning more about TypeScript, there are tons of tutorials online. You can go look at the TypeScript documentation. They've got a cool TypeScript playground to see how TypeScript transcompiles into JavaScript. There's tons of stuff out there. Go check it out if you've never done so, but you are a front-end developer definitely go check it out. And with that, I hope you've subscribed to the channel if you hadn't already before. I hope you smashed the like button. I hope you have a great April Fool's Day. Or if it's not April Fool's when you're watching this video, any other day. And I will see you in the next video.